Imagine that you're lining up that first three-point shot of the evening. Shoulders squared to the hoop, butt tightly clenched. There's the release, and... Side note, if you're not a basketball fan, that's okay. This is a video about probability. And if you're not a probability fan, don't worry. This is a video about basketball. Back to the action. Aw oh, yeah, swishalicious. Swisha. Who wrote this? Right. Okay, here's the question. After making that first three-point shot, what are your odds of making the next three-point shot? Do your odds go up, down, or do they stay the same? If we want the answer, we're going to have to jump through some investigative hoops. Allow me to explain. The hot hand fallacy is common in the world of sports, especially in basketball. The idea is that players experience patterns of scoring well in the game, during which they are called hot. Players, coaches, and fans alike report believing that when a player scores a lot of points in a row, that they are more likely to continue to score points. One survey found that 91% of the fans believed that a player has a better chance of making a shot after having just made his last two or three shots than he does after having just missed his last two or three shots. There is a science behind this feeling of being in the zone. It's a phenomenon called flow, and it can occur during any engaging activity, not just sports. It typically occurs when your skill level and the challenge that you face are both particularly high. You feel full of energy, you're enjoying yourself, and time might even seem to be passing differently. For example, sometimes I experience the effects of flow when I'm editing video or writing. We'll need to jump through some investigative hoops. <laughs> Classic. This feeling of flow generally leads to confidence, which is why when playing a sport, you may feel as if you can't miss. But maybe we shouldn't expect the odds of making a basket to change at all, if we compare to another cognitive fallacy, the gambler's fallacy, which is kind of like the opposite of the hot hand fallacy. The misconception is that certain outcomes are due to pay off, such as that betting on black on a roulette table after a streak of red increases your odds of winning. As I discuss in another video, the gambler's fallacy is decidedly false, namely because the roulette wheel doesn't know and doesn't care what the results of the previous spins were. If basketball players were like roulette wheels, we would expect the odds of making any particular shot to be the same every time, regardless of whether or not the previous attempts succeeded. But basketball players are not like roulette wheels. A roulette wheel may not care what color comes up each time, but a basketball player cares very much. That's the whole point, to try and increase their odds of making a basket. So, if a basketball player can learn and adjust strategies after each attempted shot, wouldn't it make sense that their odds of making a basket should go up over time as they acclimate to the specific conditions under which the game is being played? That seems like a reasonable assumption, right? Well, statisticians have been studying this problem for decades. The most famous paper was published in 1985 with researchers from Stanford and Cornell universities participating. They not only looked at actual game data from the Philadelphia 76ers and the Boston Celtics, but they also created a controlled shooting environment under which they could study the shooting performance precisely. In the end, the researchers concluded that runs of hits and misses did not depart from chance expectations. In other words, while the chance of making any particular shot was tied to the difficulty of the shot and the skill level of the player, it did not appear to be tied to the results of any previous shots. Their results suggested that any one shot had independent odds of success, completely contradicting what basketball fans reported believing. Confident that they had debunked the hot hand fallacy, they ended the paper with, Thus, the belief in the hot hand is not only erroneous, it could also be costly. Costly because players, coaches, and fans were banking on a phenomenon that didn't seem to exist. This publication made a big splash and is still talked about today. So, case closed, right? Pack it up, boys. Let's go home. But not so fast. Other researchers working on this problem have come to alternate conclusions. In 1995, a statistician named Robert Wardrop published a paper that challenged the idea that the results of each shot were completely independent. Specifically, he showed that the second free throw attempt sometimes had a higher success rate 
than the first free throw attempt. But he still ended up concluding that the hot hand was an illusion, specifically a variation of Simpson's paradox, in which focusing on all of the players at once leads to different conclusions than focusing on one player at a time. Fast forward to 2013, and a researcher from Princeton published a paper re-examining the 1985 data while adding new data. He concluded that when a basketball player makes a successful shot during a game, it actually decreases the likelihood of making the next shot. This decrease in shot makeitude was related to several factors. For example, once a player on the court made a successful shot, their likelihood of attempting the next shot from further away went up, possibly due to overconfidence and their odds of being switched out by the coach went down, which in turn allowed fatigue to build up. But not so fast! Two papers published in 2014 revisit the data again. A study from Harvard looked at a very large sample size from actual NBA games, 83,000 shots on the basket, and used sophisticated optical tracking to determine the locations of the players and the ball during the games. Thanks to these improvements in sample size and methodology, they were able to better detect small fluctuations in the data, and they found a hot hand effect. It was small, only around 1.2 to 2.4% increase in shot-making probability. Crucially, they also showed with the optics data that players who had successfully made a shot thereafter faced tougher defense from their opponents. Meanwhile, a joint Spanish-Italian research team worked with controlled shooting experiments, also focusing on bigger sample sizes. In addition, they looked for ways to reduce confounding variables to a minimum, such as having players take their shots from the same spot rather than moving around the court in order to maximize the chances of detecting an effect. If I understand their methodology correctly, they had players attempt 300 shots from the same spot and then come back later to do it all again. They did not, however, report the incidence of arm falling off disease. Who wrote this? Also importantly, they used advanced statistical tests that just weren't around in 1985. And yup, you guessed it, under these artificially ideal conditions, they found the hot hand effect too. In fact, when they applied their advanced statistical methods to the controlled shooting portion of the original 1985 paper, they found an effect there too, smallish but previously undetected. They reported that these results overturn the previous evidence for the hot hand fallacy in the basketball domain. So in summary, the hot hand does seem to be real, overturning 30 years of calling it a cognitive fallacy. But the effect size is so small, it can easily be washed out by confounding variables during a game. First, a player can get overconfident, possibly due to feeling the effects of flow, and take their next shot from further away. Second, coaches are less likely to switch out a player they perceive as hot, which might increase their fatigue level. And third, defending players spend extra time defending players who seem hot. For those and other reasons, such as time left on the clock, the hot hand might be cancelled out or reversed during an actual game, so fans who report seeing it might be under a bit of a cognitive illusion after all. If we want the answer, we're going to have to jump through some investigative hoops.